things more real. So I'm recording. I don't know how to work this, but we're, we're live, I guess, for the first time. But also just a reminder for all the Chabra that are on right now. First of all, welcome. I miss you guys and you guys make my night every single night. Tomorrow is our one year anniversary of this group, Stealing Torah. We've done over 300 links, 300 nights of learning. Uh, hopefully we did more than that throughout the year, but 300 nights together on Stealing Torah, quite incredible. And I feel like it's time to, uh, to uh, move on, to transition to, um, I don't know, something I've been thinking about over the past year is like, okay, we have this group, we have 95 people in it, Baruch Hashem, but like I mentioned before, 95 people aren't on, which is okay. People have their own schedules, their own lives. But I guess the whole point of the YouTube thing for year two, along with the Zoom link, will give us more flexibility, will give us more chazara, will allow us to show our children and our family members and ourselves what we're capable of doing and saying. Anyways, we're continuing in the sugya of Hibodadu. Just to recap to those who weren't there last night, we spoke about conquering God. Um, some people were a little thrown off by the word conquer, which is okay, I was too. Um, there we go, John. Uh, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I was also thrown off by the word conquer. But I, I guess just a little recap before we start is we were talking about ourselves and really not about God, but really it's about God because we have God within ourselves. So we're conquering ourselves in order to get closer to God, meaning conquering our fears, conquering anything that is disabling us from getting closer to God. Rabbi Nachman talks about how we should stand firm, how should we, we should even be telling Hashem and throwing ourselves in front of him. I want to remain a Jew. I want to be a Jew. That's the biggest line ever, right? You could be going through so many, uh, I guess, rough patches in your life, so much darkness, sinning, uh, the whole thing. But if you stand firm and you tell God, you tell the Rebona Shalom, I'm standing firm. Even through all the mistakes, I'm here. That's precious in his eyes. And God loves that. Anyways, we're continuing based off the Torah last night. We're, uh, it's going to get to a point where you're getting a little emotional. Rabbi Nachman talks about wanting to cry during your hipoda do. If you're getting so real, real with Hashem and yourself to the point where you want to conquer yourself, you're going to cry. You're going to be emotional. And even if you can't shed a tear, Rabbi Nachman touches on it. This is so beautiful. Kevra, let's get into it. It is good to talk to God and pray with so much feeling that you should shed tears like a child crying to his father. Right? We spoke about the child pleading to his father before, a couple of nights before. But if you pray with the constant thought that you want to cry, this can be highly distracting and may prevent you saying the prayers with all of your heart. People might say, Praying with all your heart will lead to emotion, will lead to, uh, to tears. Rabbi Nachman is saying it could be the opposite. You could be thinking so much about those tears and being, ah, oh, I, wa I want to get closer to Hashem through these tears. I want to be real with Hashem. I want to have that relationship with Him. But Rabbi Nachman is telling us to let it come naturally. It will come. And if we're getting distracted by these tears, we won't be pouring out our hearts 100%. When you say your prayers, separate yourself from all other thoughts and focus only on the words you are saying to God, just as a person speaks to his friend. Gewalt. Let's conclude. There's one more sentence. Your heart will then be naturally aroused and you will come to genuine tears. Meaning if you're being real with the words themselves, if you're being genuine with your own words, your own personal prayer, without thinking, out, those tears will come. And we want tears. And I've been thinking about this, um, and I want to open it up to you guys. This past year, we've been going through COVID and a lot of uh, ups and downs. And one of the main things we've been struggling with is loneliness, right? And I think we could all use a nice cry every single day, multiple times a day, right? So, we have to understand that Hashem is there for us whenever we feel alone. He's Dafka there for us. And this has been the theme over the past couple of weeks in Rabbi Torah, that we always have a best friend. 
we have oh we 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 always have someone to lean on and part of knowing that or if you do know that it will be real it will be a real relationship a tangible relationship and it could elevate you towards hashem it could bring you closer to hashem and bring you closer to yourself and help you be more aware of yourself and your surroundings. Ymir to Shem. Guys, any questions, comments? I don't know if that made sense. Open it up. I guess I'll go again first. And then, and then uh, Maisha, then you need to follow up. Give me a critique. Give me, you know, tell me I'm not Miss Nagid. Uh, they don't exist. Um, no, but there were some who thought they were in the 1800s. There were, there were some who believed that they were some sect. Um, I think what you say is actually a really interesting point. Um, I actually, I wrote something recently about like uh, the Avinu Malkano dialectic you have, is, you know, we sometimes call Hashem, we refer to Hashem as our father, sometimes as, as our king. And then we also, and then we see ourselves as, as sometimes as sons and sometimes as servants. Um, and I think, so I, you know, there are many different, go ahead throughout rabbinic literature and throughout Jewish history, but I think, you know, especially in the, between the, the Misnagli and Hasidic um, dichotomy, you had Hasidim sort of, you know, one of the big things that the Vilna Gon and the Vaisnaga community opposed was this um, praying with fervor, you know, this jubilant expression. And I think that one of the, you know, one of what Rabbi Nakba may be alluding to is that, like, and like, especially on like a son servant spectrum, like a servant is never going to, you know, go beyond certain boundaries. There's a certain limit. You need to ser- follow a certain code certain um you know certain responsibilities and therefore you can't act out but on the other hand and then maybe you you know you can act you know maybe in your head you can do it and you know you think about it but you can you can't really do it with your body and i think you know when the, the sun the sun has more autonomy more individuality more leeway to sort of express himself and i think Rabbi Rabbi Nachman is sort of alluding to it and if you see it more of the, in this this dialectic that there is there is some way to and it's honest and genuine and correct to express yourself, exploit a sense of um, personal um, feeling that I, that can get lost. You know, you become so you become so robotic with like, oh, I'm just following the laws. I'm just praying. I'm just saying words, especially the prayer. I'm saying words, and you know, these are the words that are you know the the chazals are inst- uh, instituted, and they have you know. Uh, since they have some divine prowess to them or, you know, whatever you want to um, refer to them. But I think at the end of the day, it, it, saying it routinely every day can get lost. But when you put in some feeling to it, when you actually are going on the verge of crying, unless, I mean, I maybe misheard, but it seems that like the doctor was really talking about like getting into it and really um, expressing um, really your soul into what you're saying, you sort of add a level where this is not just, I am saying this. This is something like it becomes new every day. I think I think the Rebbe, um, there's a whole thing the Rebbe used to say when he put on tefillin every day, he used to, um, every day he, he would put on as if it was the first time with that same feeling, with the same passion. And I think one thing we could really take away from, you know, what you just spoke about was really that, you know, sometimes we need to see this, we need to perceive ourselves. Sometimes you need to perceive yourself as a servant and sometimes you need to see, uh, perceive yourself as a, a son and you need to oscillate uh, perpetually. But I think, especially when you're coming to prayer, like every morning, yes, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say the word, I'm going to say the words, I'm going to say the prayers, I'm going to, show up on time, but you should give some of yourself. You know, faith is something that's very personal. That's where Shigar talks about how faith is very private. It's all about how you express your, how do you show Hashem, I want a relationship. You have to throw yourself out there. And you want to, when it goes back to conquering Hashem, like you need to like really just like get out there. So I don't know, conquer, I don't really like conquering so much, but whatever, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, there is something about um, so much, something very personal um, that is being expressed. Beautiful. Um, just to, this is just my reaction to what you just said is vulnerable equals personal. We could discuss that afterwards. But anyways, um, Moshila, you have anything to say or anyone else? Why am I called out? I have to respond? No, you don't have to respond to anything. <laughs> no, no, you can just you give your own thing. <laughs> I have nothing to say. But I have everything to say. Anyone else? Tamar, iPhone. Jacob Kislasi, um, Daniel, Donnie, Jacob Hershkovitz, Yoni Strahan. Yeah, I'll, I'll say something really quick. It's definitely not going to top that, but it's just a little something that's happened to me um, in terms of Hipotidu. 
I think when I was there for my year in Israel, I don't know. I just had this crazy ability where my prayers afterwards were so connected. And for some reason, I can never mimic that afterwards. I tried after like some Hagim being back home in Toronto. I tried, you know, going a nice walk by myself and just try to talk to God and really just try to mimic exactly uh, that same scenario from uh, my year in Israel. I can never do it. But the one time, I think it was this Pastor Shoshana, I took like, it was like five minutes before like actually starting Shmona Esrei, where I just like was just closed my eyes and fought. I was like, everyone was already diving Shmona Esrei. I closed my eyes. And I just thought about the Kise Kavod. That's all I did. And I got, I was so connected from there. I had such a crazy, crazy Amida. Um, but yeah, just like a little something I wanted to say. Beautiful. Beautiful, Kislasi. Anyone else? Anything? I'll go again. No, stop, stop, stop. Uh, all we need is just a smile. And that's the right. end of it. Right? If you smile, everyone else smiles. It's amazing. Anyways, Hevra, this has been great. Any, any last uh, people want to mute themselves, please uh, feel free. If not, we'll conclude. I wish you guys much health in every aspect of life, success, wherever you are, whether you're working at a wine cellar like Aslasi is each and every day, and he's balancing that with Torah, which is beautiful. John Seidel in IDC and Herzliya, Samson Schiff, again, working on uh, building bridges, connecting bridges to connect Am Yisrael in the Holy Land. iPhone, truth is, I don't know who iPhone really is. Um, and Tamar, Mamish defending the land, going to the borders. Daniel Molinsky, Shana Bet, Oraita, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Keep learning for Ami Israel. Jacob Hershkovitz in Queens College, Gavalti stealing Torah during his college schedule. And Donnie Sawson, why you in Maryland? What can be better? Mirza Shem, guys, will continue tomorrow night. Have a great night.